In today's video, I want to show you how you can export presets and make them packaged nice so that you can sell them or just put them up for free for your community or your friends or whoever you want to export and give your presets to. So let's head into Lightroom and let me show you how you do that. All right, so now we are inside of Lightroom and what I want to show you here is how you export the presets that you've made and afterwards how you can package them nicely digitally so that you can sell them or gift them to whoever you want. So what you do is, if you don't know already how to save a preset, you do that up here, create preset, and then you just take off the boxes that you want to, you give that a suiting name, and you can create a new group or you can put it into a group that you already have. And then you can click create and you will get them over here in your presets tab when you are in develop. You won't see them in library, but you will see them when you are in develop. And now the group actually makes a difference because when you export your preset and uh, save it and give it to someone else or you import it into a new computer with new Lightroom, whatever, the naming of the group will stay. So it makes sense to actually uh, save that one and give it a name that is suiting for your preset pack and uh, maybe including your name like I've done here and then let's get to how you export so you right click on your preset and then you can say export you choose a location to save it I've already saved it once but I called mine coffee because it was a preset of the coffee photo that you just saw from another YouTube video I click save I already have it in there so I'll just click replace and what you will see is that it's an XMP file so you see we have it out here and it's just coffee.xmp so that's the easy way to save it and that's the photo that or uh, the preset that we are saving now that's very easy very simple to export but you probably want to package it nicely something else that you might want to do is to make a legal document stating that this is not to be resold or repurposed for anything anyone else if anyone else wants the preset they have to buy it from you if you are selling it and you might want to make a guide on how to import the presets as well you do up here and click import i am making a youtube video as well on that if it's not already up on my channel it will be in a couple of days from making this one so you can find it there you can create a guide from that and that will make it easy for you to just sell the preset and then it's easy for people to import them as well whether they use Lightroom Classic as I am or if they use the CC version to go across your devices that's not a problem but what I want to show you now is if you want to create a nice packaging you've probably seen that before when you see preset packs and this was something that took me a while to figure out how to do so that's why I want to show you how to do that as well I went on to Google and I searched for standing box mock-up and I'll probably put free there as well you can just find something but this is kind of like what we were going to create these standing boxes where you can put your preset on so you can find someone uh, one of them and if you find a PSD file that is what we're looking for so there's probably a lot of options but I've already got one so let's jump into Photoshop and this is where I get mine so what we want to do here is First of all, what I did is I went to the image tab up here and I went to canvas size and I just resized the canvas. It might come up with a warning because the uh, image might be smaller or something if it's in another factor. Mine was in landscape before and I wanted it to be vertical. So that's what I did. I changed these settings and now we got this box. From the one that I downloaded here, we have the option to just click change the sign. If we double click on that, we get into a new layer that is just a flat white one. But what essentially this is, is what we are seeing here. It's the front and it's the side as well. And that is why I made a guide here to show where the line is, where it bends in the other one. And that was not included beforehand, but I just put a photo in and I adjusted it slightly. And then I went back and forth. When, I, when you save this layer, then it will automatically apply it over here. But let's make something super simple. So I just want to make a kind of like a before and after uh, front and then I want to make some text in here and maybe put my name uh, in the middle in the front. So that's what we are going to uh, try and do. So let me just find a few photos that can show you how that is done. So we have these two before and after. So we can just drag in. And we'll just click OK on both of these and I will just drag them to the side. Actually, I'll just to make it easy, drag them both onto the line over here where we have the guide now they should be 
just on top of each other and they are not so we can just adjust them using this one up here makes them aligned on the left because the one was one was slightly uh, ahead of the other one and i'll just make the after shot on the front what i want to do now is i want to kind of make a split between these two so i'll just make a line and i'll make it go from down here in the corner and up to the other corner here and if i'm lucky the guides the herbal lines here will kind of help me it's a little bit difficult to hit that right now it doesn't have to be perfect right now so i'll just make one i'll uh, cancel the fill and i'll make sure that we have a wide stroke i'll make that wide stroke uh, actually that doesn't change anything because we need to go in appearance you could have done that before so that's how you do it before you make the line but we'll go over here and i'll make it 10 pixels and then if we just unclick that you'll see that now we have a wide line that can show kind of like the before and after and an easy way to just quickly do this uh, you could make a selection mask and all that but what I'll just do very quickly is I'll choose our after shot. That's the one that's in front right now. So if you hide that, you can see the behind or the before uh, behind that one. I'll make a mask. And what I want to do is click B to get the brush tool. And right now it's very small, I think. So we'll just get it like this. And we can choose between black and white. And that will either uh, show or uh, hide the ones in the mask. So white will hide it. but black will kind of erase it so if we just do like this maybe we want it to be actually quite a lot bigger just do this and we have flow on 36 that's not supposed to be so flow on 100 and then we can kind of just draw out this now i'll be way more uh, precise and that's why you can make um, a, a mask to make this easier but what i want to do very quickly here just for the purpose of not making this tutorial too long it's just kind of make it a little bit rough you can see that i didn't do it perfectly but you get the idea you get the point so let's move on i will do a text layer now and i'll put some text over here i'll just call it uh, lightroom reset and that color is white right now now we have our text over here i will just click OK and then click Command T to transform, hold Shift so it does it in a box and then now we have uh, 90 degrees and I will just make sure that it's a little bit bigger so maybe 150 pixels could be good and I can choose V to select and click on the preset again. If I click Command and select the cover which is the background I'll get the option to align it so i'll just align it on the middle and now we'll just only choose the preset again and if i hold shift while i drag it you can see that i only drag it from the side to the side um, when i start dragging first and we'll just put the preset there and i will just copy it by hitting command j and then slide it over and we will call this copy that's too many e's copy there we go and maybe we should have made this in, uh, in capitals as well. Just move this slightly to the side like this. I think that looks pretty good. And one last thing that we could do was to make a square down here. That is wide, it's perfect. And we'll just put that in the middle there and then make another text layer. And we could call that at Alex which is my handle and make that 80 perhaps and what I don't like right now is that it actually did it inside of the box so I'll delete that again I'll make the text layer outside make it black that's fine 80 click on the move tool or click V Oops. and now I have selected way too much there we go and we can do the same thing with the box as we did before. If we shift click because they are on top of each other or command click the other one, we just align these so that they are centered and in the middle. And this is kind of like our, our design for this made really quickly. If I click command S, it might take a little bit for it to save. So we'll just skip ahead until it's saved. All right, now it's saved. It took a while, but if we jump to the 
other one again, the first layer. Now you can see that we actually have a preset pack that looks pretty good. It already had the highlights and everything up here. So now it looks pretty good. We can just hit file and export and you can export it for whatever you want. Uh, I'll just for now quick export it as a PNG. And we are getting into a different folder, but exporting presets, that is where we want to be. And we just want to call it oops, preset preset pack uh, image cover. Let's call it cover and save it. And if we go into the folder now, oh, then we have our PNG here that we can then use for our cover preset. So that's an easy way to create a quick design for that. And now you can just put that on your website. So an example of that be my website here. You can see that I've just made a preset on that. And if you click the link, then you'll be taken into another page where you can just see preset, you can see it before and after. Uh, this is actually a YouTube video that I made where I made this preset and you can download the presets for free. So I've just packaged it, uh, packaged it, it and uh, I didn't make a legal document and a guide because this went pretty quick, but that's what I'm gonna do in the future, especially for those that I'm selling. Um, so that's just something for you to keep in mind. And you might wanna do these uh, kind of before and after that you often see on a preset. So when you pack it, you can do different ones, uh, different before and afters. So let me just show you quickly how you can do that. If we jump into Photoshop again, we can create a new file. Let's create new. And what I usually go with for that is just uh, 1280 by 720. You can do whatever you want. Uh, make sure it's resolution uh, 72. That's good for web. And you can choose these settings. It doesn't matter that much, I think. Now we get an image like this. And let's just drag in our two photos from before. So let's find those again. That is from another one. And just do our before and after. And we're basically just gonna do the same thing as we did before. So we're dragging these to each side. We're going to make um, a guide that is just a new guide. And then vertical, I'll do it 50%. And then I have some weird things going on in my Photoshop. So we'll just do it again, 50%. And now we get a line, a vertical like directly in the middle. So what I want to do now is I will just take my uh, after shot and I'll to take that all the way to the side when it lines up with the purple ones. Click Command T, drag it from the middle all the way over to the middle like so. Click OK. I'll do the same thing with the other one. I'll put it all the way up against that line. I think we actually missed it a little bit like that. Click Command T, drag it all the way to the left. And that will make sure that you have the exact same photo on each if they are different size, si sizes, sorry. I'll make the line again. We can use the guide for that. So I'll just put this in the middle, make the line, make sure that it has no fill, make a stroke in white and make the stroke 10 pixels. Maybe that's too big for this one actually. So we'll make it five pixels instead. And we can just see how this, you can hide the uh, guide again if you click shift command and then uh, this button the comma button on my keyboard and then now we have a perfect split on these actually we can see that we kind of missed this one a little bit but we can just point that one way to the left and now we have a perfect before and after that you can just show you it's static so you don't have that slider that you go back and forth with but this is kind of how to showcase your different photos on how they work with the preset photos that you've taken and you can do that with a bunch of photos. You just export the before and you export the after. And I can quickly show you how to do that as well. So this is the after shot. So I would just go to uh, file and export. And I would just choose my settings, export it in here. And then I would go with a reset everything and export this. This is the before. You can also do it before you even start to edit anything. And then you can click Command C after you've exported it. And then you have your before and after, just like we have in our Photoshop right here. You can export it the same way you did before. You can export it as a quick one if you want that. This is the same one as we had before. So we can say coffee before, before, after, and then save it. And if we open our finder and go back to our photo here, 
we have our photo here that we can then upload to our website. We can use it as a thumbnail, whatever you want to do. But that's a quick way to make this before and after look. Yeah, so that was just a very quick guide on how you can make something like this a package. You can export your presets. If you have a website, if you use Etsy, whatever, then you can upload these and you can start selling your presets or you can give them away. But this is a way to quickly export them, package them together and make them look nice for when you're trying to sell them. So really hope this helped and thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video.